Hello. Thank you all for uh, staying until 5 p.m. Uh, really excited to be chatting to you all today. Uh, so my name is Matt Lozak. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Allo Atomics. Uh, that's how you pronounce that name. And uh, not to be confused with Alto University, which is over there. It's the first other company I've seen with a similar name. Um, so pretty cool. So essentially what we're doing is we are building small nuclear reactors that are factory mass manufactured. And each reactor is 10 megawatts electric in output. So uh, for those of you who are in the energy space, you probably know this, but for those who aren't, this is roughly something that can power 10,000 homes or a small data center. And uh, there's a lot of interesting things about this reactor design that I'll get into that make it pretty unique and special. So the market that we're going after initially is data centers. And if you walk around this conference, uh, you probably won't go 10 seconds without hearing a lot about AI, data centers, that kind of thing. And just to put this into a perspective, um, there's a lot of new demand being created by data centers. So typically, a city with a million people will use a gigawatt. And you can see here that there's already around 20 gigawatts of infrastructure for data centers today in the US. And this is going to be, at the very least, uh, doubling and possibly even 4xing in the next uh, decade or two. And so just incredible amount of demand. And what we're doing is kind of unique, which is we're deploying fleets of these reactors. So essentially, uh, instead of having one large plant for nuclear, which if it gets turned off for maintenance or refueling results in you know, downtime, if you have a fleet or something called an N plus one configuration, you can essentially have complete uptime, which is a really, really nice fit for data centers because they need energy essentially around the clock. And so you can do a single reactor, a five pack, a 10 pack, et cetera, and go anywhere from 10 megawatts all the way to gigawatts with this kind of configuration. So uh, the technology is based on the Marvel reactor from Idaho National Lab. So a bunch of our team we brought on from this program. Um, and it kind of made a history recently, which is pretty interesting. In 2020, uh, this was nothing more than an idea. And in 30 months, the team went from a concept to the first ever DOE authorized nuclear reactor. And so the DOE, the US Department of Energy, um, gave this design permission to be constructed in October of last year, so just about a month ago, uh, a year ago. And the reactor is under construction and going critical in the next year or so. So this is essentially our scaled down test reactor. And uh, you see uh, this kind of non-nuclear version here. Um, this is where the, uh, uh, the thermal hydraulic testing is happening. And this was it loaded on the back of a truck uh, to Pennsylvania for testing. And you know, we've also layered on a pretty great team around uh, this core kind of Marvel technology. So um, we've got a few people from Bloom Energy, uh, which is, you know, some of you might know, is a natural gas fuel cell technology company. They kind of do this magical black box that can power data centers in a, also an N plus one configuration. And so, uh, for example, the person who led their finance and helped them raise you know, $5 billion to finance a lot of their projects has come on board and is leading our finance side, uh, as well as uh, someone who led their product. Um, and uh, also on the data center side, we have an executive from Microsoft who was formerly a director of energy there at Google, at AWS. So we're really kind of trying to optimize this product and this technology and the team to be a really good fit for these data centers. So here's the team uh, at our new uh, factory space in Austin, Texas. So uh, uh, today we're about 30 people, um, scaling to maybe uh, 40 in the next uh, few months. And uh, here's another view with the, uh, the Austin skyline. And so we've started making the non-nuclear version of the full-scale commercial uh, version. So I think this, this photo is pretty beautiful. Um, and uh, so you know, it's already underway, which is really exciting. And uh, so about two years ago, we raised our seed round. That was six million. Um, in the past year, we raised our Series A, which ended up uh, close to 30 million. And next year, we're raising 100 million. And so with that capital, that'll be enough to construct the first uh, nuclear version of this reactor. 
And uh, we actually have a site at the Idaho National Lab uh, already selected, a letter of permission from the Department of Energy. And what's kind of special is for this first reactor, we're doing DOE authorization, um, which for anyone here who might have looked into nuclear deployment in the US um, is kind of nice because typically you'd go through the NRC, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. And so with the DOE, it's a bit of a more streamlined approach. And it's kind of nice and almost poetic because you know, the first atomic age in the 1950s and 60s got its start at Idaho National Lab. And there they built 52 test reactors in the 1950s and 60s. And then when nuclear interest kind of you know, waned a bit, uh, it went down to just three. So from 52 test reactors down to three. But now there's a bunch of new test reactors that are about to get turned back on. And Marvel, which is what our technology and team uh, largely comes from, and Pele are essentially competing head to head right now to have the bragging rights of the first new advanced reactor being built in the country uh, since that first atomic age. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but this is our, our strategy here. So uh, the Series A is going towards the non-nuclear prototype that we're building in our factory space right now. Um, the Series B is going towards the Allo X, the experimental reactor we're building at Idaho National Lab. The Series C will go towards the project finance, so the project equity comp uh, component of financing the first fleet of reactors. So um, for that, we have an MOU with a local utility at Idaho Falls, which is kind of the city close to Idaho National Lab, um, which is where a lot of this stuff was developed in the 1960s and 70s. Um, and eventually, we want to essentially move from a PPA model, where we own and we operate, to a model where we focus on the factory and make 100 reactors per year. So 100 times 10, so it's a gigawatt. It's a real giga, giga factory, um, gigawatt per year. And partner developers will deploy these reactors, much like you know, solar or wind turbine uh, partner developers currently deploy that technology. And it'll go from kind of being you know, venture and government funded to more bank and traditional you know, debt finance. Um, so a few interesting things about the technology. So um, a lot of nuclear vendors are using HALU, which is kind of 20% enriched uh, uranium fuel. And they're using TRISO fuel. And this was a good idea up until a few years ago when Russia invaded Ukraine. And because they were the main supplier of these types of things uh, in the US. And so now there's a big challenge there. And the economics is really tough for TRISO fuel and for HALU. So we're using LEU plus, and we're using uranium zirconium hydride fuel. And uh, that sounds like a mouthful, but uh, remember that name, because I'll come back to that in a second. But the net result is that we can produce 10 megawatts in a form factor that essentially everyone else is producing one megawatt in. So that's kind of what, what uh, sets us apart economically and allows us to use a small reactor, which you know, nuclear went large for a reason. There are economies of scale. But there are also diseconomies of scale. And we're trying to find that optimal balance of economy of numbers and economy of scale, if that makes sense. So this is what that kind of results in uh, for the first product, uh, an LCOE target of 7 cents a kilowatt hour, which you know, is expensive for maybe utility, but a very good price for data centers, with an eventual product, the Allo 2, reaching the 3 cent per kilowatt hour, which is really a special price point. You know, if we can achieve that, that's a, a really big deal. So the fuel, I mentioned earlier that it's kind of special. Um, has anyone here been to a university research reactor before? Maybe by a show of hands. Two in the back, a couple here, mostly not. Um, so what's really interesting about a lot of these research reactors is they use a nuclear fuel uh, called Triga, or uranium zirconium hydride. And essentially what it lets you do is you can pull out the control rods, which are the things that slow the reaction. And you can pull them out as fast as possible. And in a normal reactor, this would be a really, you know, a kind of a bad day if you pulled out the control rods really quickly. Um, but with this fuel, in one millisecond, the reactor will pulse from one megawatt to a gigawatt and then shut itself off in a millisecond thanks to the inherent physics of the fuel. And uh, if you want to understand how that works, feel free to pull me aside later or something. But um, it's really, really cool fuel. So it essentially cannot melt itself down. And 
if you think about the technology that you would want in a factory that is producing 100 reactors per year, making nuclear ubiquitous, it should be this safe. Um, and so that's, that's a big part of this as well. So uh, just a quick aside, because the history of this is kind of cool. So uh, these folks are who invented this fuel 70 years ago, and it essentially was since forgotten. It hasn't been used for power production ever. And so a big part of our company is doing, doing right by these people who invented this incredible technology that really should exist. Because you know, I think many of you have probably seen in the news, nuclear is uh, getting a second look. You know, it was kind of forgotten and uh, you know, largely misunderstood. But right now, there's a huge wave of pro-nuclear movement. And people are realizing that it's actually arguably one of our best tools for achieving this energy transition and fighting climate change. <clears throat> so this is a, a university research reactor in Austin, 20 minutes from our office. It looks like a normal building. And you know, a big thing that's worth mentioning here is that the inherent safety of the reactor allows us to save extra work on large, contrived, expensive engineered safety systems. I have two seconds left. So in summary, this is kind of what makes us special, why we're exciting, designed for manufacturability, inherent safety, and high uh, tech readiness level. And lastly, this is what nuclear can do. It can separate GDP from CO2 emissions. This is France. Uh, when France went nuclear, you see uh, their growth continued and their emissions went right down. So that's what we want to do for the world. And yeah, thank you.